Hey my friends, welcome back to another Wood Shaped video. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on in the shop, uh, in the Wood Shaped workshop these days. Um, you haven't heard from me for a few months. So first thing is I'm working on these drawers. I'm redoing the inside the drawers for a little mini chest. I've basically done this first drawer and then the edge banding. So I'm excited to get that done. A couple other projects that I have on the list. I'm going to be building a custom walnut sink for our kitchen. It's basically going to be like a farmhouse style sink. That thing is going to be epic. Um, which reminds me, you're going to want to go ahead and get subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss my future videos. I'm going to try to start putting videos out at least once a month, if not every two weeks. So I'm going to start ramping up my production a little bit more. And so I'll, I'll have more videos out um, this year. So hopefully we all have a 2020 vision and we're able to see clearly as far as what we want to accomplish in 2020. I know that, that I definitely do and I'm excited for that. So go ahead and click the bell icon so you get the updates as well as uh, make sure you do the, the drop down where you select all updates so that you, you don't miss out on anything. So one of the other things that I have in the works as well is a farmhouse door. Um, a sliding uh, soft closed door for our entryway to our office. Um, that's another one in the works. So we've got some exciting stuff coming up here. And if you have any suggestions on builds you'd like to see, then uh, definitely leave a comment below. i read all the comments. So for the purposes of today's video, I have a picture out on Pinterest of this mug rack, uh, the initial one that I made for my wife. And it has thousands of pins. And so uh, there have been a few folks that have asked, well, you know, how do you make these? So I wanted to get the information out there and I wanted to get the build steps and process out there. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So I hope you stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. And without further ado, let's get on with the build and we'll see you at the end. Let's talk about wood sourcing for just a minute. For most of my reclaimed wood, I just search locally either on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and I look for pieces that are wide. I found a really good supplier. Um, if you can get a good score with someone locally, uh, then that's the way you want to go. So I started milling the wood up and I just did the back and side face, um, the side for joining the pieces together and of course the back for the rack so that it can lay flat when it's hung on the wall. Went with the usual joinery method, uh, just pocket holes in the glue. For the pocket holes, I placed the holes minimally across the width of the mug rack. And I think for this one, I did two holes, one on each edge, and then obviously the glue will have the, the true holding power that you need to keep the pieces together. Then I measured using my woodpecker's measuring tools the distance between each hole and this was a 12 placement mug rack so I drilled 12 holes. I drilled my holes at a 30 degree angle. I used a special drill guide that attaches to your drill. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. I decided to go ahead and do a dado down the back for the strips of wood that are actually used to hang the rack. The wooden strips on the back can be picked up at any big box store. If you don't have a router, then you don't have to do that. Uh, just, there will be a gap behind the mug rack, but these are really thin strips, so it, it's very insignificant uh, when you hang up the rack. So I switched up my steps on this particular mug rack, and I went ahead and routed two parallel dado slots in order to fit a C channel which will allow the mug rack to stay flat. I haven't done this in the past but I learned my lesson on that when I shipped one of my mug racks from Kentucky where it's very humid to a dry environment. One step that I performed off camera was you need to stain the dowels as well as the back of the mug rack to kind of match the rustic weathered look of the barn wood. So this was done with the dowels as well as the strips of wood that go in the back to hang the rack. Next you just drive in the dowels and my dowels were about five inches long. These are 3 8 inch wooden oak dowels. And with that the build was complete and then you can go on and put your mugs on there. 
and just enjoy how they look. Um, this is obviously a really awesome piece to have in your kitchen, especially when your cabinets get full and you have no more room for mugs. So I occasionally like to do these quicker, kind of shorter videos. Um, they're kind of nice to put out. So I'll probably be doing a mix of, you know, short, long, not in really any particular, you know, pattern or anything like that. But I'll be doing some of the shorter videos as well as, you know, depending on the project and how much work goes into it, um, some longer ones as well. And so nonetheless, it's going to be entertaining for you. And we're both going to learn along the way. And so I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I really do enjoy making these. Uh, there's a few, de definitely a few different things that I did on this particular mug rack. Um, you know, C channel is not something that you always have to put into, you know, these types of projects. A lot of that's determined by, you know, what climate you're going to be sending the product to. Every project is going to be different. And then especially if, depending on who's going to enjoy that product, um, you may have to consider all those factors when you're doing a build and as far as the wood movement goes. Now I've made these mug racks before and I've shipped them, for example, I'm in Kentucky where it's really, really humid and I've shipped them out west to like Arizona and they've ended up moving quite a bit. And when you, know, when you go to hang them on the wall, they're not flat. And so we have to really consider all the variables when you're, when you're making these projects. If you experience wood movement a lot when you you make something or during your projects, then you know you may want to go with a C channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then like I said in the beginning, go on and get subscribed and uh, hit the like button and leave a comment below. Let me know what uh, what you thought of it. Until next time, remember to go shape some wood, and we'll see you again very soon. Have a happy 2020.